that as the president urged parents to make sure that their kids were too young to be vaccinated, make sure they wear masks. Make sure your child is masked when they leave home. That's how we can best keep our kids safe. And yes, that means at school, even in states like Florida and Texas, where governors are putting politics ahead of students' health and safety by trying to ban mask mandates. Masks, vaccines, those are the best weapons we have against a virus that is killing more than a thousand Americans every single day. Yet there are people who don't trust the vaccine, but they're willing to try any wacky thing or to read about online, or they see like when that these two people in Mississippi have been hospitalized after taking an anti-parasitic drug meant for livestock. The FDA tweeted, you're not a horse, you're not a cow. Seriously, y'all. Stop. You're not a horse, you're not a cow. Seriously, y'all. Stop. So, let me get this straight. Think about this, okay? You won't get vaccinated. You won't wear a mask. You say, oh, you're worried about the FDA approval, you know, it's infecting, but you'll take a drug meant for deworming livestock. You're going to trust your health, your life, to rumors and misinformation. Just the latest in the hall of shame of COVID disinformation. I said, suppose when you brought the light inside the body, which you can do, you get through the skin uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. Right, and then I see the disinfectant. It knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Like injection inside or, or almost a cleaning, as you see, gets on the lungs. Former COVID misinformation or chief right there. But even he can't control the misinformation anymore. Because this weekend he told the crowd of supporters in Alabama to get vaccinated. And guess what? He got booed for it. That shows you just how out of control this whole thing has got. Former guy tells people that he's been vaccinated, something we only learned months after the fact. People booed. After feeding the misinformation monster for years, can't control it now. And there is news tonight on the investigation of one of the darkest days in American history. I'm talking about January 6th. That's when bloodthirsty rioters, Trump supporting rioters, tried to overthrow our free and fair election. Hunting lawmakers forced to run for their lives and beating police trying to defend the seat of our democracy. Sources telling CNN the House Select Committee investigated January 6th plans to ask companies to preserve the phone records of multiple people, including some members of Congress. We don't know which member records the committee is interested in, but the question of who spoke to the president that day should have seemed to be a sore spot for some Republicans. Jim Jordan, you know, he hasn't been contacted by the committee to preserve his record, but he would comply, saying, quote, I've got nothing. I want you to just remember this from last month. Congressman stammering, stuttering, uh, I'm, 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 trying to make, not to make eye contact when he is asked what should be a pretty simple question here, is to speak with the then president on January 6th. Did you speak with President Trump on January 6th? Yeah, I mean, I, speak, I, I spoke with the president last week. I speak with the president all the time. I spoke with him on January 6th. I mean, I talk with President Trump all the time. I mean, that's, that's, I don't think that's, unusual. Uh, I would expect members of Congress to talk with the President of the United States when they're trying to get done the things they told the voters in their district to do. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of amazed sometimes that people keep asking this. Of course, I talk to the President all the time. I talk to him, like I said, I talked to him last week. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go. I, 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 I spoke with him that day after. I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, 
I, I just don't know. Uh, I have to go back. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, uh, you know that when when those conversations happen. But um, but uh, what I know is I spoke to him all the time. Did you eat the blueberry muffin, son? Um, I don't know. Then why are there blueberries all over your face? So you spoke with him on January 6th. You think that maybe after, right? But you'd have to go back, but you don't know when the conversation happened. But all you know is that you speak with him all the time. Do you really expect us to believe that you don't remember when you spoke to the President of the United States on the day the Capitol was attacked by God, chanting in my Really? Okay. Y'all believe that? By the way, look, there's a gallows. I've said it before, the lies and the misinformation killing us, killing our democracy. The lies and misinformation about COVID, and the big lie that you will be attacked on the United States Capitol. So just how wide-ranging will the committee's investigation of the January 6th insurrection be? Whose phone records will the select committee want to see? Congressman Adam Schiff on the committee. He also attended a briefing just today on Afghanistan. He's going to discuss that. We're going to discuss that with him and a lot more.